Hey everyone, welcome back to the bathroom renovation series. Last week we left off with installing the heated floor and now we're going to move on to installing all the tile for the shower. Let's get to it. I decided to tile the floor of the shower first and then move on to the walls and I find it best to dry fit all the tiles first so I went ahead and cut all these out on my wet saw and then I laid them in place without any mortar. Alright, now we have all of the shower tiles cut out but we still have to cut out the hole for the drain so let's go ahead and do that. So here's the drain. I turned it upside down so I could mark out the square where I need to cut out these tiles. And I used a red wax pencil to mark those tiles. As you can see here, you can see that square. So then I'll use my utility knife to cut out the tiles that I need to cut. Take those to the tile saw, cut those, bring them back in and make sure everything looks good. Let's get to it. So now let's go ahead and cut these. All right, let's see if it fits. This is honestly the first attempt, so it might not fit. We're gonna have to make some adjustments. I'm just trying to remember the order that all these pieces go in. And then this piece goes here, but it's not really gonna stay. So we can fit it in. Nice. It works, first try, look at that. And then this cover goes on top. Sweet. Once I knew that all the tiles would fit and everything was cut to the right size, I moved everything out to the garage so that I could get ready to mortar the floor. And actually, before installing the floor tile, I actually installed the back of the niche as it will be the same tile as what's used on the floor, and I just wanted to get that out of the way, and it was a nice little test before I went on to the larger floor section. Now I'm no expert tiler, but I have done some tiling in the past, so I do have some experience, but I've never done a shower pan before, so I just had to make sure that as I lay the tile, everything was uh, sloped in the right direction and there weren't any uh, big lips on any of the tiles, they were all flush with one another. Then it came time to install this drain, and this is the Schluter drain, and it's actually a pretty easy install, and you're able to set it to the proper height because different tiles have different heights, and so you can actually uh, press it into the drain and set it at the exact height that you need so there I just used my float to make sure it was flush with the surrounding tiles and it did take a little bit of time because as you remember I cut out all those small pieces that surrounded the drain so I had to install those and make sure that all the grout joints were uniform across the board but once I had that done it was pretty easy going as I was able to just lay these large sheets of the mosaic tile and it went pretty quick I just had to install some smaller pieces around the border but once that was done I could start grouting I just made sure to wet the surface and then we applied some black grout and you got to be careful with which grout you select as the dry times can vary greatly I selected one that was only about 15 minutes of dry time so you don't want to work in too big of sections but I was able to do the whole pan in one go and then I could come back and clean it off sometimes if you go too big of a section the grout that you started with will start to dry out and then it becomes a real difficult uh, process to clean all that off so I recommend working a little bit smaller sections than you might think then I came back with a cheesecloth to polish off the haze and we're able to move on to the wall tiles now as you can see I laid down a sheet of cardboard over the floor tile to make sure I didn't damage that in any way but once I started mortaring the wall I realized that I should have put tape around the perimeter so before I went too far I did that and that was a big lifesaver so I recommend trying to mask off your floor as best you can if you do that before you do the wall tiles but similar to the floor I had everything pre-cut and then I was able to just lay it in place and that way you can um, not worry about your mortar drying out before you're finished with the the wall so luckily I had Bianca help me it was uh, after working hours for her so she was able to come and back part of the tiles and we're able to get this whole wall in in maybe about an hour and a half so I thought that that was pretty good time but having all the tiles pre-cut was definitely a big time saver then the next day I was able to pull out all of my spacers and then start on the next wall this time around unfortunately Bianca was working so I didn't have an extra set of hands so I decided to mix up smaller batches of mortar and kind of work in smaller sections doing maybe three rows at a time and this worked well for me as I'm always extremely nervous that my mortar is going to dry out before I finish so this was just a little bit of peace of mind and it made the process go a little bit easier knowing that I only had a small section to do and then I could take a break and then do the next section. As you can see I'm making sure to back butter every single tile and I'm actually not using levelers which I thought I would but because 
because I made sure that all of my walls were perfectly straight well before beginning this process, as well as being able to apply a very consistent amount of mortar to both the tile and the wall, I was able to basically have zero lippage all the way across every single tile that I laid. And if I did start to have lippage, I definitely would start implementing the levelers. However, throughout the whole process, surprisingly, I didn't have to, and so you can be the judge here, but I think I got pretty good results not having used them. And now as you can see, I'm going around the window, and that black border is a shooter strip, which I've never used before, uh, but it basically is a trim piece that covers up the edge of the tile. Now most people put in the shooter strip after they lay the tile, however, I actually super glued it in place as I wanted to use it to measure to when I cut my tiles, so that was actually extremely helpful, but I had to make sure that I offset it from the window so that I could put a tile on the inside of the window and hopefully that makes sense but you'll see it a little bit later in the video but I actually got really good results this way and then it came time to install this tile over top of the window and this was probably one of the hardest tiles to cut I think I actually had to cut it twice as the first one broke as you can see it's pretty fragile and if I were to put too much pressure in a particular spot it would crack so I proceeded with extreme caution as I applied this but I just made sure to very slowly compress it into the mortar but everything turned out really nicely and I'm really happy with the way that the Schluter strip frames out the window. Then with the second wall complete, it was finally time to move on to the third and final wall. I saved this wall for last as I had to go around both the niche and the shower mixing valve, but by now I was pretty confident that I could do it. To cut out the shower mixing valve, I actually used an Expo marker as I did before to draw out the specific circle that I would need to cut out, and then I used my angle grinder to slowly chip away at it, and then I could eventually break it just by hand. Then from there I just came back with the angle grinder to clean up the hole a little bit, but I had to be very careful as you can see it's pretty close to the edge there and was pretty prone to cracking. For the niche, I used the same technique with the Schluter strip and everything came out really nicely and I was actually able to line up the seam with the left edge of the niche. That was kind of happenstance, but I'll take it. Also I was able to align the tiles so that they basically wrapped around the corners of the shower which is really nice, so it just looks like a continuation of tile on each row. Then it came time for the final piece of wall tile. The tapping helps to compress the ridges and make sure that there's no lippage and then I could install my spacers and we're all done. Alright so it's now time to do the inside of the shower niche as well as the inside of the window. This is going to be a little bit tricky because I want to make it perfectly flush with the Schluter strip that I already laid in both here and the window. Also I need to make sure that the bottom side of both these spots is angled in toward the shower about a quarter inch from the bottom to the top. And I also need to make sure that I put the, just enough mortar so that it sits flush, but not too much that it starts oozing out the sides. So it's not actually a ton of tile that I need to lay, but it is a little bit tricky, so you have to be careful about it. Also, I was able to use these tiles as kind of my whiteboard. An Expo marker works perfectly on it, and then when you're done, you can just wipe it away, and it's as if it was never there. So anyway, let's get to it. I started with the bottom tile, making sure that it was pitched in toward the shower, then I actually put the top tile on and then the sides so that the sides actually support that top tile while the mortar dries. Once the niche was done, I moved on to tiling the window, and I did it in the same order of operations, doing the bottom tile, the top tile, and then the two side tiles. And this was a bit tricky as I had to add some excess mortar to the back of the tiles to make sure that it would sit flush with all of the Schluter strips. And it was at this point I realized that I couldn't reach my side tile even though I already had the top tile in place. Bianca? So after some finagling, I was finally able to reach it and put it into place and everything went according to plan, but I definitely was worried that I was going to drop that top tile and it was going to crack on me, but luckily everything went to plan, so we're all good. I then added in my spacers, and you can see here how those two side tiles support that top tile while the mortar dries. Then I could finally pull up the cardboard. And 
and you thought we were done with tile, didn't you? Well, we still have to actually do the curb, and there's a couple ways of doing so. Some people like to do mitered corners on the sides, uh, but I actually opted to install a Schluter strip here, so all of my corners are just going to be butt joints, but I started with the sides, making them flush with the top of the curb. I then installed the tiles on top, and I was actually able to get two full tiles across without any other seam, so that turned out really nicely. All right, we're finally putting in the last piece. Then we can add our Schluter strip. And these will slide in from the sides. I already cut them to length. done. Sweet. And with that curb, I just wanted to mention that you also have to make sure that it's pitched in toward the shower, just like the bottom of the window in the shower niche. Now when it comes to grouting the walls, we used black for the floor, but we're actually going to go with a very, very light gray for the walls. It's basically one shade darker than pure white, and that's because I didn't want the grout to stand out on the tiles, so I just wanted to kind of blend in. So it's actually called frost, which is basically just a very, very light gray. But I'm really happy with the way that it turned out, and yeah, grouting isn't too bad. You just, again, want to work in those smaller sections, and I do have a full video just on grouting if you want to get a little bit more detail on the process. Another quick tip when it comes to grouting is you want to make sure that you don't fill any change of planes with actual grout as you want to use silicone in those areas or a silicone grout which is what I'm using here. It basically is 100% silicone however it dries and looks just like your grout and you can make sure that it color matches appropriately. So I use this on any change of wall plane or from the wall to the floor as you can see here and I just made sure to tape it out as silicone can get pretty messy. Another alternative is to use some soapy water, but I find that tape is just a lot easier, especially when it's on black tile. And then I installed the shower mixing valve and we were all done, or at least for this video anyway. As you can tell by this picture alone, we have a lot more projects on the horizon. So get subscribed and stay tuned as I'll be posting the last couple videos in this series every single Saturday. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. So that's going to wrap up this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something along the way. And as always, Thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.